All right, ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin here. Uh, this could be more towards the radio community or the ham radio community. And what I built was a what's called a quarter wave stub filter. What the purpose of this device is is to uh, well, depending on the designs, you can either notch out frequencies or you can uh, using the open circuit. Uh, or you can um, make it a bandpass filter. This particular design, what I did was I created a quad stub network in order to block out the FM broadcast because at one of our radio repeater sites we have four FM broadcast transmitters as well as we are direct line of sight to about seven or eight other FM broadcast transmitters and um, Somehow we came up with a number of 185,000 watts is in that area. Uh, how they came up with it, I don't know. It wasn't me. But all I know is, is that that thing right there, one's $30,000 plus device. Uh, anyways, it, it said that the uh, front end was, or that the uh, antenna input had was overloaded when I connected this directly to the repeater's antenna. Um, and it even did the same thing after it's connected to the system's duplexers. So that tells you right then and there that there's a lot of power getting through, even through the duplexers. Um, and the duplexers have a 90 dB of rejection on each side. They're four can duplexers, which is probably not enough. Um, but we're only running 60 watts, so it's uh, 90 dB uh, is enough rejection for 60 watts anyway. It's not like we're running several hundred watts. Anyways, the filters that I built, it's a quad stub network. I'm actually kind of surprised and still that it came out this way. But I'm using LDF 450 coax, just scrap coax. I'm using a quarter inch superflex, and you can see this curve here. I'm transmitting negative 30 dBm of power into it, and as you can see, if I have, if I'm transmitting negative 30 dBm of power, you know, minus the cables there, they're gonna, you know, be about, you know, two dB or so each, maybe two and a half dB loss, including the connectors. So realistically. Uh, the first frequency we need to notch out is 92 megahertz, and as you see right there, it has, including connectors, 70 dB of loss, and it spans the entire FM broadcast band all the way up to 108 megahertz, and it has, so, 5 dB loss in connectors, 71 71 dB of loss in the FM broadcast band, which this still may not be enough for what we want to do. Anyway, the insertion loss will scroll up to the repeater frequency, and you will see right about right there. So, okay, between, I don't know, 0.3 dB loss on the receive side, which that's plenty enough because right now we're getting about 20 dB of of uh, descents from those receivers and it might be more than that like I said those are just some arbitrary numbers but you see that look at that curve right how much that dips down that that's amazing anyways what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do the second test what you need to do if you uh, want to build one of these to transmit through it is you want to see what the SWR is so hang on a minute I'll set it up for you okay so right now I have a dummy load connected to one end as if it's connected to an antenna and then I have the cable going right to the uh, analyzer here and the MFJ antenna analyzers are good for the home environment but you know bringing something up like this to a, a commercial repeater site uh, leave it at the house it's, it's, it doesn't do too well in high, R, uh, high RF environment but there's the SWR 1.2 to 1 and um, it's uh, just about happy, right where it's at. This, uh, uh, yeah, it's just about happy. 1.2 to 1 SWR, and actually you can tune it around a little. So if you actually were to build one for the home, it's uh, it's usable for just about the entire ham band. So um, it'll add to the the uh, complex impedance of your existing antenna system. So obviously, if you're going to build one, uh, you build it with caution and you build it to the pretty much with the, to the uh, frequency range you're going to stick to. So let's actually plug this in. Um, we're going to plug the antenna in directly to the service monitor and you're going to see what the FM broadcast is. So uh, that way you don't see any magic tricks or anything. We're just going to plug it in. So that's the antenna. 
goes right there. Oh, when you turn the generator off. So there you see the noise floor is right around um, 90 dBm or so, a little bit more than that. But you can still you can still see that it's very high here. Uh, and this is just on a J pole outside the house. So this is 86 megahertz right around the uh, one of the side lobes or, or one of the um, uh, yeah one of the sides of the uh, the transmitter. So I can't think of what it is, but whatever. Anyways, you see it's pretty high. You see the strongest signal that I'm receiving here is 99. It's actually 99.3. Oh, actually, that's 98.3 is what that is. So that's a, that's a rap station. Anyways, you see that's just full of signals, and they're negative 50. So give me a second, and let me connect this up. All right, so no joke. The antenna right there comes in. A little curling cue goes to, the, goes to one of the sides of the... Uh, of the uh, quad stub notch filter here. Look at that, gone, nothing, no FM broadcast there. And then, and as you saw in the curve, it starts going up at about 130, there's some attenuation, but it's just about lossless at 145 megahertz. So this is the, this side lobe, or this, um, the signal you see here, this is the weather station, which is fine. I'm not too worried about that, 162 megahertz. So you'll see that that's there. It's actually 162.4, but we already got a broad, we already got a filter, knock that out. And it just so happens that the the uh, that weather station has a has a one has a one or five kilowatt transmitter site uh, about 100 feet away from ours. So you see the effectiveness, at least 50 dBm that it knocks it out. There's nothing completely. So. Um, I'm hoping it's going to do the same thing, do some real effectiveness. So as we saw in the service monitor, it drops it out uh, about 70 dB. And as you see there, the FM is completely gone, all of it, which is pretty neat. So let me show you some of the basic math here. A fellow a ham, a ham friend of mine did some of the basic measurements. And some of it is still French to me, but it's just not something as simple as you get a couple of T connectors, you get a couple of... Uh, uh, coax length connectors um, or a couple coax lengths that are you know a quarter wave length apart and your center piece is a hundred is a, a half wave no it doesn't do that this requires using calculations on Smith charts if you plan on getting this right within a timely manner so you see his professional writing he's obviously been doing it significantly longer than mine but I figured it out and obviously it works oh that books helps too so sorry for the crappy video it's a uh, quarter to midnight. I want to go to bed, but I want to make this. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I am learning about this stuff, so I don't know everything. But as you saw, just that thing right there from scrap coax that would have been in the recycling center um, got turned into a useful filter that will uh, do some stuff. Because you know, uh, uh, buying a commercial product to re to do what that does is anywhere between 500 to to $1,000. Hmm, you, you do the math.